Good morning. Welcome here to Unity Spiritual Center of Portland as we gather. Wherever you are, whatever's happening, as we gather in a consciousness, a circle of energy, of love, of life, of a recognition that the inner resilience, the core of inner resilience within your very being moves through you, it lifts you, and it moves around our circle of consciousness. I'm Reverend Lisa Davis, Senior Minister here at Unity Spiritual Center of Portland, and we gather to remember our interconnectedness, to realize the truth of our being and of every being on this planet, and to join in the movement of love, of life, of the presence and power of spirit. And so to our newcomers, we want to welcome you. It's your, if it's your first time here at Unity, we are so happy to have you with us. If it's your second or third time, welcome back again to all of you. Welcome back. And if you haven't yet signed up for our email list, please go to our website, unityofportland.org. Click contact us and give us your name and email, and we'll put you on that list and, and let you know what's happening coming up in the future. I want to share with you just a few things that are happening now. And I'll do the announcements, the full announcements, at the end of the service after we do our closing prayer. I want to thank Reverend Sidney and Reverend Diane for their wonderful messages in the past two weeks. Their wisdom continues to bless us, and we are so grateful. I am so grateful. Every Wednesday, we're doing prayer intention flags. 6 to 8 p.m. in the east parking lot where masks were socially distanced and wearing masks. Bring a chair if you want to do them there or stop and pick up some of these flags. You can bring them back later to the church. It's such fun. They're beautiful and it's a wonderful opportunity just to hold that space. We have our Black Lives Matter flags and people are responding. It's great. Karen Trusty and Barbara O'Hare will be doing a class. Let's talk about race 103 on Saturday, August 29th. So this come in Saturday, 1 to 3 p.m. I'll talk about that in the announcements later. You can get it on Eventbrite. If you're interested in holding, hosting a small group, please look at um, doing that this fall. You can contact the office. We'll let you know more. So we'll talk about that later on. I want to thank you for your wonderful donations to this spiritual community. We appreciate all that everyone's doing for us to get this message out. And I want to just say, right now is a time for all of us to go within. It's our time for our meditation and our opening prayer. And so as you listen to this music, it's, we get to remember the interconnectedness of us all. We are creations of spirit. said a prayer for you today I said a prayer for you today I said a prayer for you a prayer for you today I said a prayer for you today I said a prayer for you relax our bodies, getting comfortable right where we are. We know that this divine essence within us is this, this true self of us. It is the flash of the absolute recognizing itself as us, 
and we breathe into that knowing. We relax into an awareness that as we center our mind, our body, into the I am, we allow and facilitate a movement of spirit throughout our being. I am that I am moves through me now. I relax into a knowing, a knowing of an order, a divine order in the universe. I relax into an awakening of the light within my being that reminds me in this moment I am just where I am to be. Where I'm standing is holy ground. And in that knowing I relax into the silence where I'm standing is holy ground in the silence. Again and again, as we know this idea of divine order, a larger understanding than we may yet see, we see it moving through us, out into this world, divine order, a larger understanding of love moves in and through and as this world now, a larger understanding of peace is present in this moment. And we see that expansion around our city, around our state and our country, and around this globe. For there is one presence and one power that moves in and as and through us now. And we say yes to this awakening and yes to this presence and this power that guides us, that reminds us of our wholeness, and we know that we know that we know that it resides within us cellularly and around us globally. We are one in the Spirit. And so it is. Amen. I said a prayer for you today. I said a prayer for you today I said a prayer for you A prayer for you today I said a prayer for you today I said a prayer for you today I said a prayer for you
Power to trust, to start again, and when to make changes, always looking within. The power to love and to forgive, learning to let it go and just live. It's how we feel, it's how we know. Which way to go? The power to heal, to feel mm -hmm. renewed. Oh, keep on believing mm -hmm. and see it through. The power to care, to make amends. Compassion, being able to bend the power to be, to laugh and cry, making it all okay, embracing the light. It's how we feel, it's how we know, it's how we think about which way to go. The power to heal, to feel renewed. Oh, keep on believing and see it through. It's how we feel, it's how we know, it's how we think about which way to go. The power to heal, to feel renewed. Oh, keep on believing and see it through. Susan and Mark Bregal, thank you, thank you, thank you. This power within, that's what they're singing about and playing about and talking about. Are we willing to allow ourselves to know it, to feel it, to allow that to guide us? Good morning again as we continue to gather and, and create consciousness within ourselves. I just welcome you to this fascinating time in humanity. We are in a place where we're living within the midst of uncertainty, and yet I believe that what our spiritual journey, and every one of us is this amazing, powerful spiritual being having a human experience, and what the spiritual journey and this path of, of sacred that we are on requires that we do or invites us to do is to hold that center and to find that center and that place where we can trust this journey, where we can invite in this understanding of the infinite. You know, I used a, a, a part of Thomas Merton's quote earlier in the meditation, and he said, the spark 
which is my true self, is the flash of the absolute recognizing itself in me. The spark, the true self of us, the light within our being. It's the flash of the absolute, the quantum field, the infinite intelligence, God, recognizing itself in me, as me. Now, if you look outside or happen to watch any news or go on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or any of the others, I have a feeling you may feel a little jumbled and a little like you're living in the midst of chaos, and we are. That's the human part of the journey. What's fascinating is we get to decide where it is we're going and how we allow this journey to move through us. Maya Angelou said, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. I would invite you to allow yourself to be open and receptive to the wisdom and the learning and the, and the remembering, a cellular remembering that's available in this time. It is there. And it will teach us, it will lift us, it will love us. There's a Buddhist proverb that says, if you wonder where you're supposed to be, look down at your feet. That's all it says. It answers a lot. And for me, I know sometimes I look at my feet and I say, I don't want to be here. And yet, I believe what we're being asked to do is embrace it all. Embrace it all. Bring it in to our hearts. Bring it in to an awakening and to an opening. And you know, this path isn't a straight line. As we go through our journey, our lives continue in this spiral. And I've talked so much about the spiral, but just the shape of it means that we come back to these, you could call them low points. I don't see them as that, but we come back to these events in our lives again and again and again. And a few weeks ago, I actually wrote this message, the basis for it, because I didn't want to go away on vacation somewhat and, and think, oh no, there's a message. And so I wrote it and I have to laugh because it's on forgiveness. I just have to laugh where the universe is. But what I recognize, and I do it in my life periodically, is that there are times when literally we come back to the same place and the universe is inviting us to do a bath, a bath of spirit, a bath of, of understanding, a bath of letting go, to just bathe ourselves in an awareness of this truth in the universe, these spiritual principles, and allow us to sweep Keep clean the stuff that we have held on to, that we, that we just haven't allowed to move through us. And I believe right now it's really important to keep allowing that to happen. John Wineland said a big part of this work is learning how to come to the present moment completely free of your history. Coming to the present moment completely free of your history. Because a lot of times we come back to this day and we think, oh my, what do we do now? How do we create here? Oh, look, the same things are here. I'm the same person. You aren't the same person. You're a creation of the infinite. You are a creation where there is the vibrant life of the universe flows through you now. And most of us wake up and we have our 70,000 thoughts during the day and we just take the ones from yesterday our view of this is right, this is wrong, this shouldn't have happened, this should have happened, and we just put it all together and expect our day to be the same. But it doesn't have to be. We live and move and have our being within this quantum field. We have the ability to pull from that, to allow ourselves to see something larger. Celeste Myers, one of our congregants that I absolutely believe it can mentor all of us. I had, she said something that I have been living within for the last 10 days or so, and she talked about in her life when things get difficult, she stands in the shadow of the divine until it lifts it, and she finds, she finds love, she finds forgiveness, she finds a higher vision, she finds God in all of it. Sometimes in our lives, we're standing in the chaos and saying, this is the truth of all of it. You can go to Byron Katie's work. You can go to, to any of the Fillmore's work. You can go to Ernest Holmes' work. And the truth is that there's an underlying field 
from which all things are created. And we have the ability to go back again and to look again at where we are. Joe Dispenza says it in a really clear way that I, I really, his, his work is so powerful. He said, pure consciousness. That's what you are left with if you take your attention off your body, your life, possessions, people, places, times, all the things that happen to us. You're left with pure consciousness. And he said, when you disinvest your attention and energy out of the stuff out there, out of this 3D reality, and place it in the immaterial realm called the quantum field. Charles Fillmore called it substance, and he said it's everywhere present. Before, there was even a quantum word being said. And, he, and Joe Dispenda says, here, energy, light, and information exist as frequency. So most of us spend our time with our thoughts in the appearances out there. We don't actually go in. We don't divest ourselves, get away from the thoughts of what, who did what to who or what's happening out there and go instead into a place where energy, light, and information exist as frequency. They're vibrating. And if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, which is the outer often, and if you place your attention instead on this invisible field, and this is Joe Dispenza, you're investing your energy into that field. And that field gives birth to matter. It always does. But many times when we invest our energy in what's out here, and we have to show up every day we have to be aware of what's happening. We have to meet what's happening. We have to stand up for what's happening. But I believe we also have to go back inside into that place. In, and he does it through meditation. I know that's how I learned of getting quiet, going back in and sitting with the creative energy of the universe and recognizing that there's something larger within us. We are more than we've ever dreamed. We are not these things that happen to us. Those come to bless us, to remind us of the truth of our being, and to support us in being the change that we desire to see. And so Joe Dispenza goes on. He says, how does matter form? An atom stripped down to its raw essentials exists only as energy and information. It's all energy, and there's information. But it's not without design. At the quantum level, a structure and orderliness exists, so there must be a force unite, unifying them. And this is literally organized energy. That's what the, the zero-point energy field is. It is a creative energy. And when we connect with that and sit within that understanding, this energy gives life to matter. It creates from there. So my invitation is for us to go back in to a place where we don't have to look at what's happening out there, but instead we feel the very vibration of the universe, of life, of love, of presence, of power that we are, and we sit in that for a while. And we remember that we create from that. And so we hold a space of awakening, of deeper understanding, of an expression of the presence and power of spirit in and through and as us in our lives, in where we're going, in who we are, in our bodies. And we allow that to move forward. Joe Dispenza also said, to heal something, you must enter the unknown. A lot of times we just run away. And so we don't allow ourselves to be whole and to know ourselves in that. And so really, it's returning to source. It's allowing something more to happen. So how do we do that? When we really look at forgiveness, I think we get to go to that place of standing in the shadow of the divine, of recognizing that the universe is saying, allow something more to be created. Allow something more to, to be known and to understand. There is no place in the wisdom teachings where the idea of forgiveness is not listed as complete, whether you go back to what Jesus taught in Mark 2.10, this idea of how often do I forgive? It's seven times 70. That number actually meant completeness. 
There was, and it also means infinity. It, it was a spiritual completeness. In the um, Buddha said, if we look at ourselves truthfully, we can feel the possibility of being more compassionate, more awake, more free. If we were not, if it were not possible to free the heart from entanglement in hate and fear, I would not. I would not teach you to do so. He just basically said, I'm teaching this because that's what the reality is. And this idea, I wanted to say, even in the Quran, I was so impressed, and I'm hoping I find these notes soon, that the notes sounded so much. The Quran, 42, 43, but with all, if one is patient in adversity and forgives, this indeed is something to set one's heart upon. And then another one in the Quran, 7, 199 to 200, keep to forgiveness and enjoin kindness. Turn away from all ignorance. And if it should happen that a prompting stirs thee up to anger, seek refuge with Allah. Behold, Allah is all hearing, all knowing, all forgiving. And this idea that every major tradition holds this, how do we hold it? So how do we really become a clearinghouse? In our lives, we have allowed some things to stick. And I know Nelson Mandela, that was one of the things he said as he was released, was I didn't want it to stay with me. I walked out of 27 years of being imprisoned and said, I leave you there. Sometimes in our lives, as we come back through things and we look again and again, we have the opportunity to see something more, to know something more, to hold something more. And it's our opportunity to do that. It's our time to say, there's more in me. There's more in who I am. And that is a time to rise. That's the place where we get to say there's something more. So right now, with what's happening in our country, what would happen? And around the world, in all the different places, all the individual things, all the collective things in, in communities, in, in cities, in, in states, and in, in so much, we say, oh, but we're living in this time. We're living in a time that it's inviting us to know something more. Don't allow our stories to hold us don't allow what's happening in the world to, to restrict us, as Maya Angelou said, or to reduce us to something smaller than that. What would happen if we let go of those stories and said there's something more? We stand in the highest truth we know. We stand in these ideas. But there's a way to do it without allowing hate or anger to live as us every day. Hate and anger have a place. But at the places in your life where you find them holding on to you again and again, how do we say there's something more here? James O.D. says, you know, and I always listen to this, stress is an evolutionary driver. Str anybody have any stress right now? This is the evolutionary driver right now for us. How do I open to something more? How do I allow something more to move through me? Gail Sheehy said, growth demands a temporary surrender of security. Can I let go of what I think is known and allow something larger to be present? We will move through this time. And there will come a place in your life journey where you can look back and say, oh my gosh, here, I thought it was this, or I thought it was this, or this was the problem, or that was the problem. Look at what was happening. There's something more. Martin Buber says, all journeys have secret destinations of which the traveler is unaware. We are looking at where our feet are planted. And right where we are, the presence and power of spirit is present, it's available, it is ready to teach us, to grow us, to allow us to find something more. So can we let go of the places where hurt and anger and unforgiveness have stuck? Can we just simply let go of those places? When we allow that to happen, something larger happens in us. I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. Can we let go? 
Ram Dass says a feeling of attachment or aversion is your clue. There's work to be done. I didn't like that when I first read that. Wherever we squeeze, wherever our heart doesn't say yes, that means the universe has gifted us as the one who gets to evolve through this. We get to stand for the truths we believe in. We can do it with respect. We can do it with dignity. We can do it knowing our wholeness. And when it has stuck in us and it has gotten a hold of us, we don't need to live this for the next 30 years. Instead, we can find a way. I, I, I just love this idea. A feeling of attachment or aversion is your clue. There's work to be done. How do we find something more? Joseph Campbell says, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. All of history has shown us that. So I believe, besides not letting it stick, the idea would be, if I've let it stick, have the courage to enter the cave where it resides. Because it resides in a place within us that will either invite the universe to come around again and open us to something more, open us to a larger idea of who we are. We are infinite creations of spirit, becoming aware of that within our being. I believe that everything that happens in our lives literally is there saying you are wholeness. Remember it, know it, allow yourself to live within it. So when we get quiet and go into the quantum field, like Joe Dispenza talks about, we get to build the I am. I am love. I am life as expression. I am faith. I am power. I am order. We, we know these truths of our being. And then we get to find the places in our lives where we haven't remembered it cellularly where the events of our lives we still are in, what Michael Beckwith calls these four levels of consciousness, which the very lowest level of, of evolution is life happens to me. Whenever we go back to a to me, we get to turn it around and say, wait a minute, life happens by me. This did not happen to me. This happened to bless me. It happened to lift me. It happened to take me through into something larger. And I believe that's a call right now in our country to allow ourselves to get clear, to get ready, to stand in these ideas, and to watch what happens as humanity finds that all of us are interconnected beings of light. The last message that Dr. Martin Luther King did before he was assassinated or, or shot, shot was he talked about the interconnectedness of all life and that my good depends on your good and your good depends on my good and the ability for all of us to know we are interconnected. And of course, I believe he was talking about and sensed within his very being this, this quantum field of love. Love is the absolute energy. And one of the expressions of love is to be able to go into the places that squeeze us, that hurt us, that we've found attachment to and allow them to melt away. I think sometimes, for me anyway, the path that I have traveled doing this is to go in and to begin to honor another person's choices, another entity's choices. I may not like it. I may not agree to it. I may want to change it. And I may be an active part of the change. But this was part of what I learned. When, when, if it sticks, then it's like, how do I honor all that's there and then move into something larger. In our country, can we honor every being? We don't have to agree, but we, have to, we do get to recognize you are a creation of spirit. You may not be showing it. You may not know it yourself, but I know the truth of who you are. And to just simply allow that to happen. Where do we go? Paulo Coelho said, remember that wherever your heart is, there you will find your treasure. And so if we go into this cave 
of the unknowing and recognize that's where our treasure is. We also know it's within our hearts. It's something larger. Our lives are dependent on whether or not we have a conflict. And most of us say, I don't want conflict right now. There's too much going on. I can't handle it. My belief for every one of us is that right now, there is more change than we've ever seen happening. Susan Jeffers in her new book, Embracing Uncertainty, that I've just started, and years ago she wrote a book that I actually used as a, from in my early 30s, I carried it everywhere I went. Her book was called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I think that's just as important, but right now her book is Embracing Uncertainty. And her first page, is nothing but the statement, embrace it all, over and over and over again. She wanted to be sure we all start on the same idea, embrace it all. So today, my invitation to you is to embrace it all, to know it's life, it's God and the infinite understanding, it's, it's a movement of spirit, and to allow something larger to happen within us. We are that light. We have the ability to recognize this, to know something more. Emmett Fox said, as long as you aren't forgiving, you are connected by a hook stronger than steel. It, we've come to a place in our lives where the universe has said, let go of the hooks. Let go of the places that, that scare you, that, that catch you, that, that uh, take you into another way of being. You know, one of the greatest examples of that, I believe, was John Lewis. His walk of standing in the truth and loving through all of it has changed a world. It changed a country. He said, you are a light. You are the light. Never let anyone, any person or any force dampen, dim, or diminish your light. Study the path of others to make your way easier and more abundant. Learn toward the whispers, excuse me, lean toward the whispers of your own heart. Discover the universal truth and follow its dictates. Release the need to hate to harbor division, and the enticement of revenge. Release all bitterness. Hold only love, only peace in your heart, knowing that the battle of good to overcome evil is already won. Choose confrontation wisely, but when it is your time, don't be afraid to stand up, speak up, and speak out against injustice. And if you follow your truth down the road to peace and the affirmation of love, if you shine like a beacon for all to see, then the poetry of all the great dreamers and philosophers is yours to manifest in a nation, a world community, and a beloved community that is finally at peace with itself. I know where humanity is going. The fascinating part is how we learn to do it in our lives how we learn to find that center, to go back into the places that scare us, where we've gotten stuck, where we've, where we've allowed ourselves to, to be angry, to it's gotten in our bodies. We may live with some of these steel chains that, that attach us to events in our lives. I believe we can right now in the midst of all that's going on, Take a day and breathe and simply allow it to move through us and go back to the truth of our being, the truth of our lives, the truth of all that is to know that there is a base in this universe that is pure love. It is vital. It is this quantum energy, and it is within us. We came with all that we need in this day, in this moment, to allow life to move through us, to shift into a place of love and life, and to remember that there's something more. We don't always know why things happen, but we can always know that all things work together for good. Life is present, love is present, God is present, and we are able absolutely able to stand in the shadow of the divine until our bodies realize it, our hearts realize it, our minds realize it. And we remember that in our interconnectedness, love is the answer, kindness is the answer, 
standing as peace is the answer. Blessings. to our beliefs like a child holds to its father it's like we're trying so hard to breathe with our heads underneath the water keep trying to find the balance of a love and our conviction because we know the life in you moves far beyond religion we know we know we know we know that nothing else even matters but the of light oh in a world of shadows is it love that we're speaking for or oh, denominations ego we gotta let go of pride embrace the idea of difference make unity our calling and move within forgiveness we know we know we know we know that nothing else even matters but love change if love was all that really mattered so that the light of love finally shined through me and you holding on to our beliefs like a child holds to its father it's like we're trying so hard to breathe with our hands underneath the water Thank you, thank you. We are one. We are an opening of spirit in this time, in this day. Um, it's time now to receive our tithes and our love offerings. We are so grateful for all of the people who have continued to hold this space for Unity Spiritual Center of Portland to be able to share this message and these ideas. And I'd invite you, if you haven't done so already, to go to or to text. 77977 to that entity, Unity of Portland, all one word, lowercase, and to share in this offering and this idea. You can send in, you can mail in, excuse me, checks. You can also go to our website and look at the donate button there. What an opportunity for us to be a part of a movement of spirit. So as we do, we just know that these gifts move in and through and as us now. And we say yes to the abundance of the universe, blessing all of us 
in this country, around the world. We are so grateful, so blessed. And so it is. Amen. We are thankful. I'm going to close with our unity prayer, and then I will follow with our announcements and some of the things that are happening at unity in about five minutes. Our connection hour will start there. You either got it on your email newsletter, or you can go to Facebook Live for Unity of Portland, and the link is there. I invite you to join us just to connect and remember the, just the joy in being together. Our prayer, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is we know this idea for every being on our planet. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. Mm. And we are blessed to know that as we remember it. I want to share with you that we will be making prayer flags again to support black lives, to say yes, Black lives are important, is vital knowing we gather outside, socially distance, and wear masks while we create our flags. I've been there. It's a lot of fun. They were up last week, and hopefully we'll get more of them up this week. Wednesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m., we have the materials to work with, and you can come and pick some up. You could also... Um, Talk to Diana about getting them during the week. Please bring a chair to sit on and an open heart to create from. We have been sprucing up our building, and we are open to volunteers. We'd love to have more volunteers. They're having a great time. If you'd like to do some hands-on work right now, they're sanding and painting. Um, or if you sew, please call Diana in the office, or you can email administrator at unityofportland.org. You can also donate to our Spruce Up Fund for paint and other uh, tools through the donate button on our website. We wanted to invite you to the Copy and Connection Hour. That's an important thing. And also, I want to remind you that this third class put on by Karen Trusty and Barbara O'Hare, Let's Talk About Race. These are all separate classes. This one has no prerequisites. The tickets are available on Eventbrite. It's Saturday, August 29th, 1 to 3 p.m. The nice part is that if you get those tickets on Eventbrite and you can't watch that day, they'll send you the video. So that's what I've been doing because <laughs> I'm not always available, but it's wonderful learning. This one has to do with the history of, of Oregon and the um, white and black understanding of what needs to happen and what did happen within Oregon. If you're interested in hosting a small group this fall, please let myself or Diana know in the office. We're going to be starting a wonderful journey of spirit groups. These are connecting us all to, to small groups. I'd love to hear from you. Diana would love to hear from you. I'm really looking forward to all of us, all of us having that connection and that anchoring. So we thank you for being a part of this community, and we just simply say you are the love, you are the light, you are the presence and power of spirit, and we are so blessed. Thank you. And we are one <laughs> with this light and this love. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm.